In this video, we'll learn how to easily remove Remjet from ECN2 film. A quick disclaimer. For demonstration purposes, I'll be handling an undeveloped piece of scrap film in the light. When prepping a shot roll of ECN2 film for Remjet removal and development, the film must remain in complete darkness until developed and fixed. Do not expose undeveloped film to the light. It will ruin the roll. Items you'll need. Rubber gloves. ECN2 film. This particular piece is Vision 3 250D. A developing tank. Kim wipes. Scissors if you need to trim your film. A timer. Something to hang your film with. A container to recover your pre-bath in. And Kodak ECN2 pre-bath. For your convenience, I have made a video on how you can mix Kodak's pre-bath yourself at home. It'll be linked in the description below. To get started, load your film onto a developing reel and place inside the developing tank. Remember, this procedure needs to be done in complete darkness or your film will be ruined. After your film is loaded, grab your pre-bath. How much do we use? If using a Patterson tank, Flip it over and check the bottom. You'll need 290 milliliters per roll of 35 millimeter and 500 milliliters per roll of 120 film. However, in my experience, those numbers are a little low. I round up to 500 milliliters for one roll of 35 millimeter just in case the reel slides up the post during agitation. I use 600 milliliters for two rolls of 35 millimeter and for a single roll of 120. Alternatively, you can place an empty reel on top of the loaded reel. Pretend this reel is loaded. This will prevent the bottom reel from sliding around once it's in the tank. Pour your pre-bath into the tank and gently agitate for 30 seconds. Next, pour out the pre-bath into your recovery container. Yes, pre-bath is reusable. I keep mine in a plastic storage container. I mix up a fresh batch once a year. After recovering your pre-bath, fill the tank with water. Secure the lid and shake vigorously for 60 seconds. Dump out the water and refill the tank. Repeat this rinse step until the water comes out clear. Usually, after four rinse cycles, the water is no longer discolored. You may need to rinse more or less times depending on how many rolls are inside the tank and your shaking skills. After rinsing, the development process takes place. Developer, stop bath, bleach, fixer, archival rinse, stabilizer. Developing isn't the focus of this particular video, so we'll be jumping to the post-development steps. If you'd like to see a video on developing ECN2, let me know in the comments. After the development process, the film can be safely removed from the tank. Even after the pre-bath rinse cycles, development and its cycles, and archival washing, you still may see residual remjet on the film. That's okay, let's remove it. To start, separate the reel and pull off your film and using a clip, hang it up. Grab a Kim wipe and saturate it with water. Gently place the wipe around the film and using a light pinching motion, pull the wipe down the film. Remember to use a fresh Kim wipe for each pass. Repeat this step until you no longer see Remjet on the wipe. Generally after three passes, Remjet no longer appears on the Kim wipe. I do a fourth pass for good measure. Some of you may be asking, won't this scratch the film? My answer, no. As long as you're being gentle and use fresh wipes for each pass, this won't scratch your film. I'm approaching 50 rolls of self-developed ECN2 and I've never had any scratches. At this point, there should be no remjet left on the film. However, you can still see spots on this piece of demo film. 
This is because the film didn't go through the rinses from the developing process or the archival rinse. If your film still has rim jet like this, soak a Kim wipe in pre-bath and carefully wipe the rim jet away. It'll come right off. Repeat the Kim wipe rinse steps. Dip a fresh wipe in clean water. Wrap the wipe around the film. Lightly pinch the wipe. Gently pull the wipe down the film. Repeat until the wipe no longer discolors. Don't forget the bonus wipe. When the wipes no longer discolor, the rim jet has been removed. At this point, you can stabilize your film and hang it to dry. Congratulations. You just learned how to remove the rim jet layer from ECN2 film. This process may seem intimidating at first, but after completing a few rolls, you'll be a rim jet removing pro. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.